What's up guys? So today, as promised, I'm going to talk about just a little breakdown of this simple lightsaber, you know, animation, un unsheathing animation that I did. Um, this is obviously, it's nothing crazy, it's nothing special. I wouldn't put this in a demo reel. Uh, this would definitely just be a little personal exercise that you have, maybe post to your website or, you know, your Venmo or your YouTube page. So as far as inspiration goes, this is obviously gonna be, you know, I was inspired from, from playing Fallen Order. And, you know, stuff like that happens from time to time when you, you're playing a game or you, you see a movie and you just have these little sparks of ideas. It's like, yo, you know what would be really cool, you know, if he had done this, or you know what would be a really cool animation if I had done something like this. Now, first things first, when it comes to any animation, I always shoot reference. It's a good habit to get into. Um, I shot reference for this. I would show you the reference, but uh, unfortunately I was in my, you know, my undies and <laughs> I'm not gonna post that to YouTube. What I was going for was more of a more of a Sith type of arrogant, you know, lightsaber unsheath. Uh, and that's what, you know, I, I hoped to fulfill in this animation. I mean, obviously when you look at an animation, even after you're done, there's clearly stuff that you could just tweak and refine and go further and further and further. But I, you know, shot the reference blocked out my main poses, my, my storytelling poses, as Keith Lango would say. Now, after I've done my main poses, one thing you always do is do your breakdown poses, right? To get your arcs and whatnot, and the, more of the timing, uh, you know, uh, overlap, follow through, favoring one pose over another and whatnot. Uh, one person who I always look up to is Keith Lango. Uh, I've spoken to him on in several occasions, and I love his idea. I know he doesn't claim it as his idea, but he has idea, you know, primary breakdown, secondary breakdowns, tertiary breakdowns. And for me, for me, that really helped me when I was starting to animate because I'm very much an organized person. There's some people who can go straight ahead. I'm very much a pose to pose person. I like a little more of structure and order. And getting that understanding of primary and secondary uh, breakdowns, it helped organize my keys as I was animating. One thing I will say, it's a little caveat here, is that make sure to save your work, people, because because what happened to me is that Maya crashed. I'm working in Maya 2020, it crashed, I lost everything, right? I had to go, the only thing that saved was my main, uh, my main uh, key poses. So first things first is always make sure to, to enable incremental saves. For those who don't know how to do that, you just go to file, uh, you'll see save scene, hit the little box right next to that, and click inc incremental save. Just just trust me from experience, hit incremental saves because in case something happens with one iteration, you can always go back to the previous iteration. This was a blessing in disguise. I know when you're working in animation, many times you hear the reference, you know, you, I never like to kill your baby. And what that is, is that you'll probably get, you know, an animation director like, you know what? The client doesn't want this, they want something else. Or you know what, we gotta re re you know revise that timing and that whole scene is edited. Or you know what, instead of having him do this, we need him to do that. And you, you, you spend all this time animating and now you have a whole completely different direction or a completely different setup or a different timing or maybe a different camera angle where you were animating to one camera and now you know due to whatever pipeline or you know the, the producers, now you have to animate to another camera angle. After that happened, I saw that, you know, I took it as a blessing this guy. So I was like, you know what? There were a few poses that you know, I wasn't really even feeling, right? When I set up my camera, I was like, I didn't really like that pose. But I was like, you know what? I'm a little lazy. <laughs> I'm a little lazy. I'll just animate anyway. So with everything being destroyed, I got a chance, you know, a second, you know, second, uh, we'll say a blessing in disguise and got a chance to really fix some of the poses that I had in the animation. So for example, him reaching out, his original pose that I had, it was a little weak, I thought. There wasn't that really good of a silhouette. Now when it came to the lightsaber, uh, I wanted something that was cool. Uh, <laughs> I wanted, I, I couldn't think of something, but I just knew I wanted it to be cool. In the end, of course, I got a little lazy. And I was like, you know what, I'll just have him spin it around his hand. I thought that was kind of cool. I was gonna have it maybe open, uh, you know, the, the, the lightsaber open as he was grabbing it or something like that, just to show that how careless he is. It was a little more of cocky, arrogant, but also how, how controlled and how in tune he was with the force. But I was like, you know what, let me just finish this up before, you know, something else happens, my crashes or all my incremental saves are all ruined and just get this done. So the one thing I wanted to stand out was him unsheathing this lightsaber, like, yo, he is ready for combat. He's a little, you know, in the beginning, you see his first pose, and you go to his end pose, it's like, yo, it's completely, I wanted a completely different demeanor. And I think I got that. I think I got that. Man, it's not the best. It's not the worst. But given the time I spent, it wasn't anything crazy. 
uh, I think uh, came out fairly nice. Well, that's all I have to share. If you guys have any questions or comments or, I don't know, anything I can help you guys with, make sure to leave uh, a comment below. And make sure, as always, to keep animating.